Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the True By Time broadcast where we believe in God powered preaching, sound doctrine teaching, compassionate reaching, and hallelujah praise. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I greet you in the powerful and penetrating name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is indeed another privilege and an honor to stand and speak to you from God's holy, sacred, and divine word. This morning, we're going to be blessed with a morning prayer from Minister Anthony Evans. Join in with us as we pray. Most gracious and all-wise Heavenly Father, it's once again that we come before your throne of grace. Father, first of all, because you said we could come and ask the desires of our heart, and you'd be gracious enough to give us those things that were then your will for us. Father, we come to say thank you for last night's rest and this morning's rising. Father, with blood running warm in our veins, with a sound mind and still the activity of our limbs. We come, Father, now to say forgive us for our sins, be they word, mind, or deed. Forgive us for our shortcomings and everything that we've done contrary to your will. Father, we pray right now that you'll continue to bless our land. Father, and for right now, we pray right now that you would touch the minds and the hearts of all of those who are our leaders. Give them the mind to regulate the things that should be happening in this country. Right now, heal the land and all the things that are going on right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray right now that you will continue to bless our pastor, lower him down into your storehouse of knowledge and fill him with your unadulterated gospel. We pray right now, Father, that you'll bless Lincoln Park and all of his families, God. And we pray right now that you'll continue to bless the sick and shut in, even those who are still in place in their homes, Father. And we pray right now that you'll continue to bless those who are homeless and those who don't have a meal to put on their table. We pray right now, Father, that you'll reach and touch all of us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Father, for anything that I fail in asking, we pray that you won't fail in granting. But take us through the rest of this day according to your will and your way. Anoint us afresh for this day's journey. And we be careful to give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray and give praise. And let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Minister Anthony Evans, for that wonderful prayer. Now this morning, we would like to have the uh, scripture read, read by our very own Evangelist Selena Hunter. And we will begin the morning message. Exodus 2 and 11 reads, One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Evangelist Selena. As we see here, Moses had grown up. And I believe, as I would say, it was, as the scripture says, it was on this day that after a beating of a Hebrew occurred, and on the same day, the death of an Egyptian occurred. And although it was unknowingly to man, God was initiating a plan to deliver his people from suffering in bondage. After 400 years, the Israelites would later be led to freedom by Moses. And who, according to this biblical story, Moses was chosen by God to take his people out of Egypt and into the promised land. 
Now since the heartbreaking and senseless death of George Floyd, let's think about it. Perhaps God is working out a plan now to deliver black and brown people from racism. Amen. Since 1619, African Americans have struggled to survive and be free of racism, mm -hmm. which has now become another 400 years. And now I say today, 400 years since 1619, today I would like to say is that we need to stop, look, and listen. All right. Stop, look, and listen. I'm going to ask Minister Veronica Johnson to come and read a scripture for us as we carry on with this morning's message. Stop, look, and listen. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 through 15 from the King James Bible. And it reads, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Amen. Thank you, Minister Veronica Johnson. As we see here, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and they panicked. And they saw the Egyptians about to overtake them. And they cried out to the Lord and said to Moses, why do you bring us out here? And what have you done to us? They were asking questions. And why did we ever even leave Egypt? And they said, when did we tell you that it's just even better for us to just stay and, and die in Egypt? But Moses told them, don't be afraid. See, fear is faith turned wrong side out. Uh -huh. The people needed faith. And that's what we need today, my Christian friends. We need faith wow. amongst all of the things that we have faced and that we are facing mm -hmm. and that we will face in the future. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. Moses told them, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch Watch who? He says, watch the Lord. Because he will rescue you today. The Egyptians you will see today and you will never see again. Uh -huh. See, he said that the Lord himself will fight for you. Isn't it good to know that no matter what we are going through, the situation, the circumstance, or the problem, or whatever it is, isn't it good to know that the Lord will fight for us? Oh, yes. But we, we, but we, we, we have to do is stand still, look, and listen. All right. We have to stand still and wait on the Lord. The Lord himself will fight. For us. He fought for us through slavery, didn't he? And while some of our grandparents, some of our great grandparents, some of our great great grandparents, I know mine were, while they were slaves, think about it. We are not. Oh, yes. Has not God fought for us from being having parents? that were slaves or grandparents or ancestors that were slaves and we now are free of slavery. Mm -hmm. Now I know some say, well, we are still going through something, but let me tell you something. It's a different from being a slave on a plantation All right. than being an African-American in America. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. 
Can I get a witness? Amen. And see, what we have to think about is that God was working a plan going back 400 years of their bondage. Mm -hmm. And he started that plan and it started with Moses. And over time, through the providence of God, we are free. Oh, yeah. We need to stop. We need to look. And we need to listen. I know some are in a hurry and want things now. But the most important thing for us right now is don't be like the Hebrew people. Because of this unseen and unexpected progress, in spite of all of the gallant uh, victories that they had gotten coming out of Egypt, they still were naked. We've got to understand that things work under God's time. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Yeah. And it seems though to me that the time is now. Uh -huh. God is making a mighty move against injustices today and racism like we have never seen before in quite a few decades. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Since the Civil War, the Underground Railroad, since the Montgomery bus boycott, uh -huh. since the sale to Montgomery Wars, Reconstruction period, Jim Crow, civil rights, and even up until now, the first American, African-American president for eight years, we have made it all the way into the White House. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. And no one can deny that we have not come a long way. Can uh -huh. I get a witness? Yes. Even though the many and we realize that we have a long ways to go, yet we still have come a long way. Oh yes. The Lord has brought us a mighty long ways. Uh -huh. That's why I say that we need to stop. We need to look. And we need to listen. Yes, we need deliverance from racism. And we need, but we also need deliverance from sin. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. What will it profit us to gain the whole world and gain every freedom and not be delivered from sin? Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Oh, yes. See, Moses told these negative-minded, fearful people that thought about giving up and started pointing fingers and, and saying all of the things that they were, had accomplished was no good and just let us die. Moses told him to go forward and stay calm. Uh -huh. And yes, we should protest, but we should stay calm. We should be peaceful because that's what the Lord, if we do that, then the Lord will fight for us. Uh -huh. And he will continue to fight for us. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. When you think about quitting, think about how you started. Uh -huh. I'm going to say that again. When you think about quitting, think about how you started. That's why we need to stop. And we need to look. And we need to listen. And yes, while there may be negative reflections, of our past. Uh -huh. But we as believers cannot allow those experiences to determine whether or not that we have a God-driven positive outlook for our destiny in life. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. See, we must have a vision. We must see ourselves getting on the other side of the Red Sea of racism and injustice. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. oh, yeah. See, Moses was trembling in himself. He was trembling in his boots. But God told Moses in Exodus 4 and 15, Why are you crying, Moses? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. God told Moses to lift up his rod uh -huh. and stretch it out over the sea. Oh, yeah. And as God told Moses to stretch out his rod, I tell you, is God's people, saved and unsaved. Let's all lift up our heads. Uh -huh. Let's all lift up our hands. And let's all lift up our voices. Oh, yeah. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. Let's lift up our prayers. Let's lift up 
our commitment. Uh -huh. Let's lift up our togetherness mm -hmm. and stretch out our faith. Oh yes. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for right. and the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Let's stop, look, and listen to the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh -huh. And his name is Jesus. Oh, yeah. Listen to his voice. He is telling us to go forward. Uh -huh. He is telling us to listen to his voice. Yeah. See, if we put him first, if we keep him first, and if we keep prayer and hope in the midst uh -huh. and keep that first, God will direct our every path. Oh, yeah. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. So I tell you this morning to go forward. Don't stop going forward. Don't give up. Go forward. But make sure you wait on the Lord. Oh, yes. yeah. Make sure you hear his voice. Uh -huh. Stop. Look and listen. And everything is going to be all right. Amen, amen, amen. As our hearts and minds go to heaven, Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we know how, giving thanks and praises for this day, this time, and this hour. Thank you for what you have done in our lives and looking back over our lives, realizing that your grace and your mercy has never failed us yet. And God, we want to say thank you right now. We want to say thank you because we can understand through the word of God that you have brought us from a mighty long way. God, we want to say thank you because we realize that it was doors that you opened that no man could shut. We realize it was ways that you made that no man could make. We realize that your hand has been on this process the entire time. So all we can do is say is thank you right now, God. We can say thank you because we realize that we live and we breathe and we move by your power, not by our own power. So we say thank you right now, God. And God, we realize that if that same power that brought grandmama through, that same power that brought daddy through, that same power that kept us low this many years, it's that same power that can move us forward. So we say thank you in advance. We say thank you because we now realize that the words of the old man, the deep spiritual still reigns true that we shall overcome one day. And again, God, we say thank you that that one day is coming. We say thank you that we truly believe deep down in our hearts that you have a plan and you have an expected end for us right now, God. So God, we just want to say thank you. Though we may be confused, we say thank you. Though we may have fear, we say thank you. Though we may not understand, we say thank you, Jesus. Because you said in all things we ought to give praise. So right now, our praise goes beyond our fears. Our praise goes beyond our thoughts. Our praise goes beyond those things that we do not understand. And we say thank you. And we say thank you in advance for how you're going to move in the season. We say thank you for how you're going to pluck out the sins of racism. We say thank you for how you're going to revive this nation to its original creed and color. That all men will be created equal. We say thank you right now for the change that is sure to come through your power. And God give us the ability to hold stand to your faith. Hold stand to the belief that we have one God, yes. one faith, and one baptism. Stand hold to the truth that you are above and beyond anything that we can even imagine. Yes. So we say thank you for what our children are going to accomplish. We say thank you for the grandchildren that are going to accomplish. We say thank you for everything that you're going to do and how you're going to move. And God, we stand here as, as humble servants. And we ask that you just make us a part of your plan so that your name can get all the glory. We ask you all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. In Jesus' sweet name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.